Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is a weekly reading. I am recording this on January 9th. And you know, I'm really excited to be doing this. I've been thinking about this video all week because after last week's reading, the first time I did a like linearized weekly reading, um, I could feel everybody getting on the train. It was like all aboard <laughs> the train. We're all getting on the train and the train is very slowly picking up speed. Like this is like one of the, it's like an old fashioned, very slow moving, almost like a steam engine train. It's picking up steam very, very slowly, but nonetheless, we are going somewhere and more people are gonna be getting on the train as we go. And how do I want to express this? There's a few things I want to do. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the astrology for this next week. Um, if you don't care about astrology and you're only here for the card reading, I will put a link in the description box so you can jump straight to the cards. Um, but I think the astrology for this week is good to know about because it's going to put some of your feelings into context because the energy right now is very serious. It's very dense, right? We're in Capricorn season and it's... Capricorn season doesn't need to be serious, um, but it is always dense and complex be, just because... just by virtue of being like the third last sign. Um, I always feel that, you know, we start the zodiac with Aries energy, which is just pure pure I am presence, right? It's just like the pure, <laughs> pure soul energy. And then with every um, sign we move through, you gain new energy, but you also contain all of the energy of the previous signs. So by the time we get to Capricorn energy, you're, we're containing the energy of all 10 zodiac signs. And the only thing we have left after Capricorn is Aquarius and Pisces, which are a different beast altogether because they are collective energies. They are the two like entirely collective signs. So it's, it's dense right now. And I, entirely underestimated the significance of the Venus retrograde in Capricorn because I have, I remember other Venus retrogrades, especially there was one in 2020, she was retrograde in Gemini and I loved it. It was like easy breezy, great, but the Venus retrograde in Capricorn has been like a slog. Um, I, like I'm just glad that I'm happily married and I'm not having any relationship drama come up for me because I, I am getting like relationship drama coming up in terms of friendships like I'm having dreams about people I used to be friends with like way back in high school and it, it's just it's a lot of just dense energy <laughs> like dense is the word it's very dense and um all morning I was thinking about what I wanted to say on this video because <sighs> I was I was feeling quite serious right I was in like the serious mode I was like uh, you know, the astrology for the next week is going to be pretty intense. And now I, I, I'm, I'm, I was feeling like, now it's almost hard for me to remember how I was feeling, but I, I just felt like everything was kind of serious and like I couldn't find my joy and that I was just kind of existing in, in density and a little bit blah, a little bit bored. Um, it was kind of lacking inspiration. Um, and I was kind of coping by just focusing on specific things and that was all fine. Uh, but then I had my perspective entirely shifted when my husband got up, you know, he slept until noon because it's Sunday and, um, I don't know how to describe my husband, but his energy is so important to me because he always finds the absurd in every situation. Okay. And he came out here and he was just showing me all of these really completely stupid videos that he thought were really funny and they were just videos of like people falling over and laughing and, <laughs> and stuff and uh, I wanted to resist it right I was like no I want to be serious I want to be all like bleh right but there's no resisting my husband that's why I'm married to him and of course I ended up having to laugh and then he made me do something what he called squid dancing where we were just like squidding around in the kitchen and it completely shifted my energy and what that I'm sharing all of this because if you're feeling like stuck in the seriousness and the density and kind of all of the like shadow work and like the blah like whatever's kind of going on look for the absurd look like laugh at the absurd find something funny like go out of your way to find something funny even though you might not want to do it right go look at videos of cats doing silly things if you know um, find something that makes you laugh because it can really shift you out of it um and if you have somebody who's always really lighthearted and doesn't seem to be affected by these dense energies like seek them out because they can make you laugh and uh 
that can really salvage your week. I mean, if you go through the next couple of weeks kind of in the seriousness, you know, that's fine, that's valid, and that will also pass. But my point here is that you can rise up into brightness. You can find something to laugh at. You can get back into like a giggly, more childlike state. And that will probably just be more pleasant for you. So I had to, I had to share that. <laughs> um, because we have a lot happening. I'm just looking at my notes over here. Okay, so I'm recording this on the 9th. And yesterday, Venus was... She conjuncted the sun, which is kind of Venus's version of a new moon. And it was weird. I, I, when I felt that I had, um, like bitterness and resentment come up out of nowhere, like nowhere, like nothing in my life happened to make me feel bitter or resentful. I was just standing around and then the bitterness and resentment like came in and I recognized that it was part of the Venus conjunct like the Venus Sun conjunction where I was just you know releasing that and purging that and being challenged to find compassion through the bitterness um, and I was kind of still reverberating with that this morning but I've completely shifted out of that so I'm not gonna dwell on that I just wanted to throw it out there and what we have coming up on I'll also put these dates down in the description box down on the 11th, Mars is squaring Neptune. Okay, so um, a Mars and Neptune square. Squares, some people really feel them, some people don't. It depends how like tuned in to the planets you are. And um, Mars square Neptune is like reality clashing with fantasy, right? Mars being very action and kind of sensory oriented and Neptune in Pisces being completely like about escaping reality. So you might find around the 11th, um, it might be just uncomfortable for you. It might just be a kind of grumpy, disgruntled type of energy. And you might be, <laughs> you might find that you are forced to face some kind of a disillusionment, disenchantment, or... But if you can tune into the highest frequency of that energy, you will find that you can take action on a fantasy, take action on a dream, right? Whenever we have these planetary movements, there's always like the more challenging, more denser, more low vibrational aspects, but then there's always, always, always a higher vibrational aspect. And the more you can laugh at the absurd, right? And rise up into the, the brightness of it, you can find why the energy is actually there to serve you. So if you have a fantasy you wanted to take action on this week, you could find inspiration for that. And let's see, on the 14th, Oh yeah, on the 14th, the Mercury retrograde begins. Um, so that's why I think the main message for this week that I've been receiving is just like settle in. Settle in, right? All aboard the train and settle in because we've already, we're already in the Venus retrograde and then the Mercury retrograde is coming up and it's just... The year is starting off not with a bang, but a whimper, right? <laughs> not with a bang, but a whimper. And um, any of your New Year's resolutions or any of your big goals for 2022 gonna be happening like not in January. I was actually driving down the street yesterday or you know, I don't drive, but I was in the passenger seat and we drove past a sign that said, um, January is like, um, is like Monday but longer. January is like Monday but longer and I laughed so hard because it's like this entire month is like the Monday of the year, right? So just don't put any pressure on yourself. Um, we're going to talk more about Mercury retrograde kind of once we're in it. Um, and I think something about the cards well, it's going to come up, but if you've been in like a deep shadow work cycle where you have been digging into your past, or you've been having dreams about people from your past, um, it's just going to be amped up, amped up. The Venus retrograde is going to be added to by the Mercury retrograde. I, uh, Mercury is in Aquarius, so... <sighs> but Mercury will later on be moving back into Capricorn. I will mention that when it happens in these weekly readings. And... Um, 
I think the Mercury retrograde is going to hit harder, at least for people connected to Capricorn energy, once it moves back into Capricorn. But, you know, I'm a little bit lost for words because I'm getting a strange vibe on this. Um, I don't typically mind Mercury retrograde too much. It makes me like trip over my tongue and I typically lose some of my Amazon packages, but you know, not, and I, I find I have themes of like things going in reverse, right? But I don't really think like typically that they're a big deal because they happen like three times a year, right? But this one feels a little different. I maybe, I will touch on this later, maybe in two weeks when Mercury retrogrades back into Capricorn. So I'm gonna put a pin in that for now. But the big thing coming up and that I will definitely be talking about again next week is um, <laughs> next Sunday, I will be making another video on this. It's gonna be the 16th next Sunday. Um, the sun is conjuncting Pluto. And then the day after the 17th is the full moon in Cancer. So this is, this is huge. This is a big deal. So you have the sun right on top of Pluto, which is going to be extremely emotional and self-transformative. It's like emotional, but you're going to have a chance to completely release something that is massively holding you back. It's going to be something like unpleasant to digest, right? It, it's going to feel like digesting a poison and then releasing it and then transforming yourself. And then we also have the Cancer full moon happening, not exactly like opposite of the not exactly opposite Pluto, but it's only one degree off. It's happening one one day off. And I think we're going to be feeling these energies for multiple days, right? Depending on um, how you tune into it, multiple days around, like starting even like this Friday or, you know, um, if you're, if you're on the other side of the Pacific, right? I'm in Seattle time. If you're on the other side of the Pacific, <laughs> um, adjust the day by one, right? Because you guys are a whole day ahead of me. But um, this whole weekend, we're going to be feeling this like explosion of emotion, right? Cap like the cancer, cancer full moon coming up out of Cap Capricorn season is an explosion of emotion, um, an explosion of sensitivity. Um, a really bad weekend to be drinking alcohol for me whenever the moon is in cancer, if especially if it's a full moon or a new moon in cancer, it's like I have no tolerance for alcohol at all. Just throwing that out there. Not like you might feel like you want to grab a bottle because you might be emotional, right? But it's like you will get hung over really easily when the full moon is in cancer, especially with this all aspecting Pluto. And when there are full moons or new moons aspecting Pluto, like, like an opposition or a conjunction with Pluto, it is just... Uh, an intensifier to how intense the new moon is going to be. So exp expect yourself to be emotional. Expect anybody you're dealing with next weekend to be emotional. Um, I'm going to, personally, guys, I'm just going to be laying low because it is going to be intense. I am, I'm just going to stay at home and not talk to anybody besides my husband. That's, that's my plan. <laughs> that is my plan because... You're probably not going to want to leave the house, honestly, unless you, if you have a... Okay, here's a specific message for the full moon in Cancer for people who have a toxic home environment. Um, there's going to be a huge conflict there because the Cancer full moon wants you to stay home. It's Cancer is that energy of the home and of the emotions and of like the mother. Um, but with this Pluto thing, it's like you're going to want to purge toxicity. So it's going to be particularly uncomfortable for anybody living with somebody that you don't like, right? Or if you have any kind of toxic toxicity happening in your home, um, it's like clean that shit out. Um, if there's something in your house that needs to be physically cleaned, clean it because that will be like vicarious energy work. Anything that you physically clean will be helping you purge the toxicity on a energetic level. You will be called to get really serious about what you need in order to feel safe and comfortable in your home. You might find yourself taking explosive action on this. If that is the case, roll with that as best you can because if you find yourself exploding, 
that is like long, long overdue. And this full moon with aspecting Pluto is gonna be helping you finally release and say what you need to say or do what you need to do. I want just this card. Okay, Queen of Cups. <laughs> this card, I don't think, that card is specifically, oh, I got, I've been pulling this sheet down. I'm gonna keep it. There we go. Okay, um, something is going to be exposed. <laughs> something is going to be exposed. Um, like an emotional secret? An emotional secret could be exposed. Uh, don't take this too seriously if you if you're like what um <laughs> if that really just doesn't seem to have it to have anything to do with you don't worry about it that's I, th I think for people who are like in a i can see somebody there's at least one person watching this who is in some kind of tangled web like their their home environment doesn't really feel like home and it feels like a tangled web there's like darkness in the home like literally like black sludge in the home you know you're living with somebody who um is not jiving with you, right? And something is going to be exposed and is going to help you break through this. Um, and this Queen of Cups is coming out specifically about, you know, I mean, Queen of Cups, right? How much more full moon and cancer can you get? Follow your intuition and know that... Uh, follow your intuition, especially if anybody is extending a cup to you, okay? Follow your intuition to decide if the cup is for you. If someone is extending a cup to you, um, you know, this could be somebody asking you out on a date. This could be somebody asking you to just have dinner like with a, fa a family member, right? <sighs> somebody, like any kind of offer, any kind of offer anybody receives this week, don't immediately assume that, oh, since this is being offered to me, it is... Um, like a sign from the universe that I need to follow through on it, right? Often it is, right? Often when we, we get a random offer out of nowhere and we go, wow, this, this seems amazing. Um, often it's like, yes, the universe lined that up for you and the universe wants you to follow through on it. But sometimes we have offers and I don't want to say that they're like tests because I don't really feel that the universe or guides are constantly testing us, right? Like that's, that's not, that's like a very human way of looking at it. But sometimes the universe does offer us something and we have, it's just to, so that we can decide if we want it or not. It's just to, to be able to practice your free choice. So you could have an offer this week. Okay, because there there is a shadow aspect to this Queen of Cups. She has a shadow aspect. Um, and Oh, man. I I never want to give messages that where I say like, ooh, someone's gonna be manipulating you, right? Because I don't I don't feel like that is you know a good thing for me to be focusing on in readings. Um and I don't really experience much manipulation in my personal life, so it's not something I'm typically on the lookout for. But this this is for somebody at least to just know that if some if, if a surprise offer is being extended to you this week, it is a definite, definite chance for you to really use your discernment, really tune into your intuition, right? Tune into your inner Queen of Cups, the higher frequency, the light version of the Queen of Cups and decide, is this really good for you? Is it really what you want? And think about that. Is it what you want? Don't think, don't, don't think in terms of, does the universe want me to do this? Was this a sign from my guides? It's like, don't externalize it like that. Any offer you get this week, do you want it? That is the only thing that matters with your choice. Is it what you want? Is it what you want? That's it. So just decide if it's what you want because there could be like shadow aspects hiding behind the offer, but there, there might not be, right? It, it entirely depends. It's going to be different for everybody's choice. So the point for that is it's like a, um, a moment for you to just really decide what you want really decide what you want. And it's important to decide what you want <laughs> because this ace of crystals, this is the ace of pentacles, the ace of earth energy, the ace of earth energy. This is so good to see because we're in this density. We're in this earth energy month. <sighs> Feeling kind of 
slow moving, right? This is letting you know that things, that new beginning is happening behind the surface. It's just that we can't see it because we're kind of rewinding the tape, right? The Venus retrograde, the Mercury retrograde that's coming up, we're rewinding the tape and doing all of this inner cleaning, this inner work, this shadow work for a lot of us. But the, the new beginning is being uncovered. What my guides are showing me is that the dust is being blown away. Um, for some of you, it's dust, right? I'm seeing like a wind coming along and like blowing away the dust in the sand and then something beautiful is being exposed underneath. But you gotta wait for the sandstorm to pass first, right? The sandstorm, you gotta wait for all the dust to blow away so you can see the stone, right? See the new earth underneath. For others of you, it's a little more watery and darker and denser and you've actually got, you know, people out there with shovels like like scraping up the muck. It is like mud um, and not just mud, it's like peat bog. It's like a bog, you're, you're, we're cleaning out the bog but underneath there's gonna be the beautiful stone, this beautiful stone that is your foundation. You're actually clearing away the gunk that is between you and your foundation. Your foundation is there, your new earth is there but there's gunk between you and it and it is being cleared away, cleared away. So. <sighs> Let me get more cards out. Ten of Wands. I'm not the only one who's having back problems this week. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and the bottom of the deck is this beautiful, beautiful Page of Wands. Okay. <sighs> this Ten of Wands is the burden of clearing away. Um... Some of you are having to haul away the muck yourself, right? It's like you looked out your window and you were like, there's all of this like junk and garbage outside. Um, you know, all of this muck, all of this muck and it needs to be cleared away, but you're finding that there's no one around to help you. You, you you're, you're gonna have to clean it yourself. <laughs> um, that is an extremely like Capricorn themed thing, right, to go, no one's helping me, I have to do it myself. Capricorn energy always ends up thinking that it has to do it itself. That's not always true. Capricorn often um, self-sabotages and does things itself even when it doesn't have to and then ending up all resentment, like filled with resentment and bitterness. It's like, why do I always have to do it myself? It's well, Capricorn, you didn't have to do it yourself. You just did it yourself because you thought that would be the easiest thing because you don't know how to reach out to help, for help, right? Um, that That is like an energetic theme coming up this week of, okay, I'm just gonna have to do it myself. And that, that for a lot of people, that is gonna be the choice. That is gonna be the choice. Do, it, do you do it yourself or do you reach out for help? There is not one answer for this. This is, that is, that is the choice. For some people, um, and you can actually, you can get a clue about which way you're gonna be going based on what kind of energy you've been because this is, a, this is transforming it and we got transformation right here, right? You're gonna be doing it the opposite way. Um, I had an experience of this recently where, cause you know, I'm a Capricorn. I always feel like I have to do everything myself. And I had an experience last week where I, there was something I didn't want to do and I didn't want to do it so hard. And, and finally, I just asked somebody to do it for me, which I never do. I like literally never ask anybody to do anything for me, even though people are constantly asking me to do things for them and I'm always just doing it. I never, ever, ever just ask somebody to do something for me. But last week I did and the person was happy to do it and it was easy for them to do and they did it in like a second and it was no problem. And I was like so grateful and I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? that it was that easy I could just ask somebody for help and then like I then I'm helped and it was great I, it was amazing <laughs> um so some of you it's gonna be like that right where you might be in this bitterness mindset of I have to do everything myself but then you realize hey I don't what if I just asked for help what if I just asked for help right other people <laughs> um especially water people right this is like the cancer people the Pisces the Scorpios um, if you often think in terms of teamwork, if you often go, if we all work together, then we can accomplish something great. Um, if you often see the value in outsourcing, right? If outsourcing in terms of, 
outsourcing tasks to other people, right? To delegating to other people or to, or if you don't mind, hey, if you go, hey, yeah, like delegate to me, I'm happy to do that thing for you, right? Um, all of that, that is all perfect and beautiful. And I'm not saying that that is bad or that you need to change or anything um, because that is it. Like each side of this energy, they're just opposite presentations of energy, right? On the Capricorn side, we have, I do everything myself and I do everything for others. <laughs> and the Cancer energy, um, interconnectedness, interconnectedness, teamwork, but can cancer can also self-sacrifice for the family, right? Just think about a mother who buys new shoes for the entire family, but then doesn't buy new shoes for herself. Is that the, the, the same type of thing, right? Cancer can be very self-sacrificing for the family. But so um, essentially, if you have found that in your past, you have often been interdependent and real talk, if you want to get really honest with yourself and you have to admit to yourself that you have sometimes been codependent, then you are going to have this offer and someone might even offer to help you. Someone might hey, say, hey, let me help you. Big warning sign. If someone says, hey, I see that you have this problem. Let me help you with your problem. That is a big red flag like for right now. That's not always a big red flag, right? All of these things I'm saying, they're not, these are not like universal things. These are things for right now, right? Because sometimes when someone points out something and says, hey, you have this problem, let me help you with it. That's like the best thing. And it could be like, you know, a guardian angel sent to help you, right? But right now in this particular energy, if someone is going, hey, I've noticed that you have had this problem. And then you go, wow, I didn't realize I had that problem. And then you're starting to feel bad about yourself. And then you feel bad about yourself. So then you accept their help. That could be a way of them manipulating you. And that can be a way of them getting to like, make you depend on them. So if somebody is trying to make you depend on them, your choice, when you have this choice being extended to you, you're going to be guided to choose to do it yourself, to stand on your own two feet, to be completely independent, to drop out of codependency, and even to, for a while, take a step back from interdependence. Interdependence being beautiful, absolutely beautiful and important energy. But <laughs> for a while, you might step out of that to be completely independent. Knight of Wands, right? <laughs> Knight of Wands and Page of Wands, igniting your fire, walking into the Temple of Transformation. Walking into the Temple of Transformation. This Page of Wands, I love this Page of Wands because she is literally walking into this shrine, into this temple. And what does she do when she gets in there? I always call the, say that she's walking into the Temple of Transformation. Got this transformation card. So for some of you, this is really going to be lighting a fire under your ass to stand on your own and be completely sovereign and be completely independent. For others of you, <laughs> this is going to be telling you to relax, to take a chill pill and to allow others to take care of you. It's this interesting, right? I remember last week the reading had this, they had this split as well, where I felt like there were two different messages depending on who you are, right? Depending on what your situation is, depending on what your past energy has been like. Same thing with this week. And that actually makes a lot of sense with the Cancer new moon coming out because Cancer energy is two things. <laughs> cancer energy contains both masculine and feminine, but it's these two separate streams that run next to each other, right? They run next to each other and you can tune into feminine ca cancer energy and masculine cancer energy. Um, and Capricorn energy contains both of them as well, but they're contained in like one thing, right? A, um, a Capricorn contains it's like they're, they're blended together, they're mixed together. The two streams of energy, the two streams of ma masculine and feminine are blended together. And the reason why we typically think of Capricorn as a masculine energy is because the energy on the planet has been so masculine. So when we look at a blended energy, we only see the masculine energy. But increasingly over the past year, I have been in, guided to like notice the feminine energy in Capricorn and the feminine side of Capricorn is coming forward. It is coming forward because the ma I'm getting big confirmation on that. Um, really big shivers. Yes, my guides are saying absolutely, absolutely. This is an important message. The feminine Capricorn energy is coming forward. So uh, it, it's all very interesting. So essentially, if you've been in a kind of masculine vibe, maybe for the past year, maybe for the past month, maybe for your entire life, you're going to be moving 
like invited to move into a more feminine zone. If you've been in a more feminine zone for however long, you're going to be guided to be more in a masculine zone. So that's why there's these completely opposite messages. For some people, it's step up, stand up, be completely independent and do it yourself. For other people, it's like take a chill pill, relax, take a hot bath and let your family like do the groceries, clean the house and cook dinner, right? <laughs> so, and this transformation card, this is Pluto conjuncting the sun, right? <laughs> we're come, This whole week we're leading up to Pluto and the sun conjunction. This is transformation. This would be the death card in a traditional tarot, but this, this deck, this starseed tarot is so high frequency. It understands that there is no death. There is only transformation, right? <sighs> Oh boy, you'll be transforming into your other half. Transforming into your other half or transforming. I wanna get more cards on this. Um, What deck do I wanna use? Okay, transforming into your other half. It has to do with the blending of masculine and feminine. We'll know more about this next week as well. I will absolutely still be talking about the full moon and the Sun-Pluto conjunction. But what do we need to know about it right now? What do we need to know? Two of discs? Change? Look at this. Look at this card. <laughs> Light and dark. Source sun, source void. Yin and yang. Masculine and feminine. <laughs> Balancing out and changing. Changing. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. I was just saying that um, you will be switching, essentially, right? From either from masculine to feminine or from feminine to masculine. And this, <laughs> this card, I, like the art could not depict that. And with this word change down here, exactly. Um, so interesting. So this could be really uncomfortable for some people. Um, say if you're like very, very, very feminine and you have been very, very interdependent, it's not going to be comfortable to have to be alone, to be alone, to be completely alone. Maybe, maybe you've been through a breakup and you're having to like realize, okay, I'm going to be alone for like the foreseeable future. I'm not going to be dating at all. And maybe you're like out of contact with your friends. Maybe you're suddenly entirely isolated and entirely alone. Uh, that, I mean, yes, I understand exactly how much that's going to suck, right? But just know that it's to ignite your solar plexus and to ignite your masculine energy and to get you to be completely independent so that when you cycle back into a feminine cycle, you're going to be more balanced. This is all about balancing out the masculine and feminine. All about balancing out the masculine and feminine. And, um, you know, it's funny to say, but if you've been very masculine, very independent, um, and then suddenly you have to be emotional and you have to be sensitive and you have to be interdependent, like... <laughs> that can be the hardest thing, the hardest thing to just relax, right? You know, I, <laughs> for myself, um, you know, if my husband and stepson are, are going to cook dinner and they, they say, oh, no, shy, like we're going to cook, you know, the guys are cooking dinner for you, right? <laughs> and I have to sit, I sit at the bar, like listening to music and like sipping my drink while that where they're cooking dinner for me. And it is like so stressful. It is the funniest thing. It is, I would rather like, I hate cooking. I hate cooking, but it, it's almost easier for me to cook it myself than to watch them cook it because I have to sit there and I have to watch them do everything in a way that I would not do. Like they're using the wrong pots. Um, they're like overcooking the broccoli <laughs> and they're making a big mess and they're not cleaning it up. And I get all like, I just want to get in there and like fix it and do it. Right. But as you can tell, I'm a recovering control freak. So I sit there and I try to just breathe and I try to go, it's okay. It doesn't matter how much of a mess they make. It doesn't matter if they're using the wrong pot. You know, I just let them do it. And it's it can be so hard and stressful to go into a, um, a feminine interdependent zone. So, okay. I don't think I need any more cards on that because this um, absolutely confirmed that. We are switching roles. And anybody, like, in a long-term relationship, you might find that the roles in your, like, the gender roles in your relationship, or it doesn't even need to be gender-based roles, but just if you have, like, what's a better word? Almost, like, job roles or, like, ta what about skill-based roles, you know? If one of you typically does the thing, 
Maybe the other one of you is going to be doing the thing, right? You're going to be switching it up, switching it up because Pluto is come. We have Capricorn Sun, Cancer Moon, right? Masculine Sun, like masculine sun in a masculine sign, and then the feminine moon in a feminine sign. Pluto's coming in to like swap it all around, swap it all around. This could be, <laughs> okay, like in sci-fi land or in the most incredible mystical experience I could even imagine having in this life. This was, this would be like, if you could switch bodies with your spouse, <laughs> switch bodies with your spouse and just for a day, right? It, it, this is a completely, like a complete inversion, a complete role reversal of masculine and feminine energy. Okay. I think just get a moonology card and call it quits. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. Here we, here we are again. I have a little bit of a quibble with this card, to be honest, guys. I love, 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 love this Moonology deck, but some of the um, phrases I find are a little bit antiquated, a little bit out of date because they're just using like third quarter moon, this half moon here you, that you can see. Um, it is often described as adjustments are required. And I honestly find that that's not really the case. So I tend to kind of just ignore that part and just focus on that this is a half moon, right? <laughs> what do we have here? The moon, half, light and dark. too funny and actually as i record this uh we're basically sitting at the half moon the halfway point <sighs> this makes me the words i want to say for this is like liminal space you are halfway it has begun the change has begun the shift has begun the pole swap is on its way There's nothing you need to do about it other than sit back, open up to the experience, and align yourself with your other half. Align yourself with your opposite. Get ready to experience the opposite. And get ready for shifts to happen relatively quickly, just like how this morning I was sitting around, kind of being all super serious, being all like, oh, the energy is so dense, blah, blah, blah. And then um, my husband, my other half, completely different energy than me. It's completely opposite energy to me. We are complete opposites. Complete opposites and yet with this similar vibrational baseline, right? <laughs> Comes out and completely turns my day around by bringing in the opposite energy, right? Get ready to receive your opposite energy and to allow that to transform your way of being. So good luck, guys. We will talk more about how we are feeling after this transformative Pluto sun conjunction opposite the full moon in Cancer next week. I love you guys. Good luck. Bye.